When the situation seems dire and the music swells, that's when a superhero shows up to save the day. Of course, not all superhero entrances are created equal. From the Man of Steel to Earth's Mightiest Heroes, here are the most epic superhero entrances in movies. The promotion for Superman the Movie promised that would believe a man can fly. It was a bold claim, and one the movie had to back up. Richard Donner and company weren't going for childish glee, like all previous live-action Superman incarnations. They truly wanted you to believe, and every frame was directed toward that end. John Williams' swashbuckling score over the spacey credits kicked things off masterfully. Casting Christopher Reeve was critical. Equally critical were the special effects. If we saw just one wire carrying the Man of Steel like a marionette, it would all be ruined. Thankfully, none of that happened. It's an epic moment when a much younger Clark Kent, played by Jeff East, arrives at his fortress of solitude to take on the mantle of Kal-El, the last son of Krypton. Who am I? Your name is Kal-El. You are the only survivor of the planet Krypton. Q. Williams' orchestral march as Superman is transformed into a man, and Christopher Reeve flies in costume and into legend, ready to deliver a five-finger patriotic punch of truth, justice, and the American way. After Superman the movie ruled the box office in 1978, a sequel was a foregone conclusion. Actually, it was happening regardless of the money, because both movies were filmed at the same time. Despite a lot of behind-the-scenes drama with directors, Superman 2 eventually took flight, and the plot finds our fair planet in peril as three Kryptonians escape their floating mirror prison and seek vengeance on the son of the man who put them there. This trio of space meanies imprisons humanity, eventually forcing the President of the United States to kneel before Zod. Meanwhile, Superman has given up his powers so he can be with his love, Lois Lane, which seems remarkably short-sighted given the circumstances. All hope seems lost when the three Kryptonians take Lois hostage, hoping to lure the Man of Tomorrow out for a round of fisticuffs. But as they say, be careful what you wish for. General, would you care to step outside? Superman! Superman, thank God. It's a bird. It's a plane! Nope, it's the red and blue boy scout coming to kick Zod's butt. Tim Burton is mostly known for his incredible eccentric style, but the guy clearly has sharp box office sensibilities. Take Batman, for instance. The movie's success is directly attributable to this one fact. Fanboys dug it, and they were especially crazy about Batman's entrances. The film features two iconic entrances, which fans are still quoting 30 years later. Batman's first appearance comes in the beginning of the film and features Michael Keaton taking out two hoodlums who have just mugged a family. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. It was such an effective line that filmmakers are still copying it today. Arguably even more awesome is Batman's entrance later in the flick. After Jack Nicholson's Joker kidnaps innocent reporter Vicky Vale, the Caped Crusader bursts through the glass ceiling with perfect timing. After all, timing is everything in show business and superheroics. Remember what we said about filmmakers copying the I'm Batman moment? Well, that line was so memorable it was repeated 16 years later in the Warner Brothers reboot. Batman Begins. You know your scene is special when even Uber original director Christopher Nolan feels the need to borrow it. The setup, however, is much different. This isn't our first encounter with Bruce Wayne by this point. We've been with Wayne on his journey from disenchanted youth to prison baddie to ninja warrior. And after an hour of build-up, we see him for the first time as a man in black. Vicious mob boss Carmine Falcone is making a deal on the docks, like he's safely done a million times before. But this is Batman's tale now. With the pacing of a horror movie, a shadowy figure takes out the hoods one by one. Falcone attempts to escape in his limo when Batman arrives. What the hell are you? Hey, just because a moment is an homage doesn't make it any less epic. Batman just seems to naturally lend himself to awesome entries, and for proof, look no further than The Dark Knight Rises. The final entry in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy may not have quite lived up to its sky-high expectations, but it wasn't for a lack of awesome entrances. The first sees Batman returning after eight years, as the League of Shadows has just invaded Gotham's equivalent of Wall Street. As night falls on the city, the police are in hot pursuit of the villains. Suddenly, several overhead lights go out. <laughs> You are in for a show tonight, son. As Hans Zimmer's score reaches its crescendo, we realize the old-timer is right. Batman is back. But then he gets his back broken by Bane, winds up imprisoned underground in an undisclosed location, and watches helplessly as Gotham City is held hostage by terrorists. Boy, that sucks. 
However, you can't keep a good bat down, and the caped crusader rises from his subterranean prison and returns home. Of course, he can't just sneak up on the unsuspecting Bane. No, that would be too simple. He has to make a statement. So he sets a bridge on fire with a symbol. Maybe it's not practical, but who cares? It's totally awesome. Superman Returns was not a great movie. It was so average, in fact, that Warner Brothers abandoned this $200 million franchise restart, only returning to the character after another seven-year hiatus. All this aside, one iconic scene is unforgettable. Superman has been gone for five years, Lois Lane is on a commercial jet being carried by a NASA space shuttle, and the villainous Lex Luthor has just set off a global electromagnetic shock. And of course, that's when You Know Who returns to Earth. Through the windows of the jet, we see something red and blue streak by, faster than a speeding bullet, as the opening strings of John Williams' score tease Superman's arrival. Long story short, Superman saves the day. Well, I hope this experience hasn't put any of you off flying. Statistically speaking, it's still the safest way to travel. Nothing fancy, but bear in mind, this was the first time we got to see a live-action Superman with modern CGI special effects. The scene was the highlight of the film, proving that even a mediocre movie can have an epic entrance. The Avengers has more than its share of epic entrances. There's Iron Man rescuing Cap from Loki, and Thor riding a wave of lightning bolts to capture his imprisoned brother, just for starters. But the most memorable of the bunch comes in the film's final act, during the Battle of New York. A giant evil space slug is attacking New York City. Mild-mannered Bruce Banner arrives on a scooter, ready to take it out. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Cap. I'm always angry. This moment is actually two entrances for the price of one, as it immediately leads into the now-classic Avengers wraparound scene. Originally, they were six individuals, now they're a team. Avengers Assemble! While there have been many attempts to bring Wonder Woman to the big screen, the Amazonian warrior princess hadn't been seen in live action since Linda Carter. However, that changed in the most unlikely of places, the first on-screen pairing of Batman and Superman. Despite the disappointment that followed in its wake, it's hard to overstate just how monumental Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was for fanboy culture. This was the first time Batman and Superman would share the screen in a live action film. Plus, Wonder Woman was going to show up too. It should have been great. It was not. However, Wonder Woman's entrance was a dream come true for millions of fans worldwide. While Diana Prince had been a principal character in the film, she didn't appear in the red, blue, and gold until the final battle. Doomsday is about to blast Batman into oblivion when, with her now iconic Led Zeppelin-like theme wailing in the background, Wonder Woman appears to save the day. If your movie is only going to have one good moment, make it a great one. Spider-Man is Marvel's most famous character and one of the most popular heroes in comic book history. By the time Captain America Civil War arrived in 2016, the character had been on the screen five times, breaking several box office records along the way. Even after the dreadful Amazing Spider-Man films, fans worldwide wanted to see their favorite friendly neighborhood superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And sure, Spider-Man's entry in the MCU wasn't exactly heroic. There was little fanfare or saving of innocence. He simply swung into the middle of a tense confrontation between Iron Man and Captain America. Cap, Captain? Big fan of Spider Man? Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Just. Hey, everyone. Good job. He wasn't even really the focus of the scene. However, that was the point. Here was a fresh, unexpected vision of a character we'd grown accustomed to. Marvel's franchise star was taking a backseat to two characters who only in the last 15 years had become mainstream blockbuster stars in their own right. It reflected the characters perfectly. Here he was, a literal kid learning the ropes of how to be a hero. In other words, this was the essence of Spider-Man. Directed by Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman features an entrance unlike any other. Taking place in the grisly pits of World War I trench warfare, the setting is more reminiscent of Band of Brothers than of a superhero movie. After witnessing the suffering of innocent villagers and the madness of World War I raging around her, Wonder Woman is moved to action. She bravely marches into no man's land, taking fire from countless German soldiers. Upon arriving in the imprisoned village of Veld, the Amazonian warrior princess pretty much single-handedly wins the battle like the demigod she is. Once again, her theme is the soundtrack, and the screaming electric guitar totally works in the 20th century setting. In an era dominated by MCU's effective, well-honed storytelling style and the DCEU's dark and dour films, there was something fresh and invigorating about good old-fashioned adventure storytelling. While the DCEU has had its ups and downs, Wonder Woman's entrance is definitely a high point. 
In Avengers Infinity War, Chris Hemsworth makes the kind of entrance that inspires actors to sign up for superhero movies. But of course, poor Thor has to go through quite a lot before he shows up to save the day. After getting smoked by Thanos in the first five minutes of the movie, and watching both his friend and brother die along the way, the God of Thunder is in a very bad place. Thor wants revenge, but he needs a new weapon to take down the Mad Titan. So he travels to the distant reaches of the galaxy to have a battle axe made forged in the heat from the heart of a star. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the Battle of Wakanda is not going well for the Avengers. Thanos' armies have breached the force field, and they're on the verge of decimating the country. All hope seems lost when a beam of light rains down from the heavens. Thor's spinning axe Stormbreaker takes out the alien army like a fidget spinner from hell. The Avengers' steam blares, and Thor is back. It's hilarious and awesome all at once. Moments like this are why Marvel is so unstoppable. We all know that despite their best efforts, the Avengers couldn't stop Thanos in Infinity War. The Mad Titan snaps his fingers, half the universe turns to dust, and the Avengers have to cook up a complicated time heist to right the wrongs of the past. And as we come to the end of Avengers Endgame's huge three-hour runtime, that's when we get one of the most epic entrances in all of cinema. While Hulk successfully snaps the Infinity Stones and brings everybody back to life, Thanos now has the upper hand in the climactic battle. His million monster army has caught the Avengers by surprise, and he seems poised to destroy what's left of Earth's mightiest heroes, reclaim the Infinity Stones, and destroy all life as we know it. The heroes once again find themselves in peril, when suddenly Doctor Strange's familiar glowing orange orb appears. King T'Challa, the Black Panther, appears. The last we saw him, he had been turned into dust following Thanos' snap. He's soon joined by Doctor Strange, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, and the remainder of our once fallen heroes. Thanos' victory in Infinity War has been reversed. We're in the endgame now. The screen is soon populated by thousands of Wakandans, Asgardians, and other warriors, ready to wreak vengeance upon Thanos. Avengers! Assemble. Only one word can describe such an entrance. Epic. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.